In 37 AD, Caligula is one of the most powerful men in the world. However, he will come to be known as Rome's Mad Emperor. I found a Rome of bricks, I leave to you one of marble. Emperor Augustus. In the year 17 AD the Roman Empire is stretching nearly 2 million square miles, from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Egypt. At its borders with Germania, sits one of the greatest Roman generals, Germanicus, and his five-year-old son, Caligula. Germanicus is the next in line to become the Emperor of Rome, but that's all about to change. Nearly 1,000 miles away sits the current and only the second Emperor of Rome, Tiberius, and his son, Drusus. Now, imagine yourself being Tiberius, whom would you choose to be your successor? Germanicus, a man loved by the people while you are considered a tyrant, chosen to rule after you by the Emperor Augustus, the man who made you divorce your first wife, whom you were happily married to and loved, or your own son. Well, that being said, something unexpected happened. Man, I can't wait to be an emperor, the people love me, I have a great family and my military campaigns are a success. I will be regarded in history as one of the best emperors of Rome. Oh no. What happened? I was poisoned. Piso did it. Now you may ask yourself, who was Piso? Piso was the governor of Syria declared by Tiberius. During Germanicus's military campaigns, they met more than once. Over the course of several years, Piso made more than one move against Germanicus, including ignoring orders and sanctions declared by him and replacing key officers to consolidate power for himself. All of this, combined with Germanicus's allegations against him on his deathbed, led to Piso being brought before the Senate. Nius Calpurnius Piso, you are under trial for encouraging civil war, misuse of government funds and for the poisoning of Germanicus. What do you have to say in your defense? Tiberius made me do it. It didn't exactly go like that, but as the trial went on, it became clear that Piso had no way to win, and some historians at the time record that he threatened to implicate Tiberius in Germanicus's death. That being said, something had to be done. Hey man, hold this knife real quick. What am I supposed to do with it? Um. Nothing, just put the pointy end towards yourself. Like this. Oh no, he took his own life. Anyway. Hey guys, quick update, Piso is dead so yeah, the trial ends. Piso taking his own life seemed highly suspect. While it was inevitable that he would be executed, it is rumored that Tiberius had him murdered in his cell, to avoid his involvement in Germanicus's death coming to light. Pray assign me any part in the government you please, but remember that no single man can bear the whole burden of empire. Emperor Tiberius Son, we did it, Piso is dead, Germanicus is also dead and now you are the next in line to take the throne. Everything is solved and nothing bad can happen from now on. Oh no. What is happening? I'm dying suddenly. At this point, after the death of his son, no one left to trust, rumors going around about his involvement in Germanicus's death and also because he saw an eagle which flew off in an unusual direction during a military ceremony which is a sign of bad omen, Tiberius had had enough, he fled to the island of Capri never to set foot in Rome for the rest of his life. In his place, Tiberius left control of the empire in the hands of Sejanus, the leader of the Praetorian Guard. Now, for foreshadowing purposes, the Praetorian Guard was originally formed for the protection of the Emperor on the battlefield, but transitioned into a protective unit at all times, and after Sejanus was in control of the Empire, they were given political power, and were also able to dethrone emperors they felt were a danger to the Empire, and install any individual who they believed to be a better fit. While Sejanus is in control, Agrippina the Elder, Germanicus's late wife, started blaming Tiberius for her husband's death. She had the support of the public and many members of the Senate. Fearing a revolt, Sejanus had no choice but to remove her from the public eye. Agrippina the Elder and her two sons, Nero, no, not that Nero, and Drusus, were arrested under accusations, false accusations, and is set forward by Tiberius himself and were sent into exile where all three of them would later die. However, Agrippina's three daughters survived because they were females and thus not considered a threat, as well as a young boy. That boy was Caligula, soon to become the last male heir of his legendary father. Let them hate me, provided they respect my conduct. Emperor Tiberius. Your Majesty, 
There are terrible rumors circulating in Rome about what exactly you are doing here that I cannot say on YouTube. Additionally, you do not have an heir to the throne, and as a result of all this, the people hate you. What? I know exactly what to do, bring me Caligula. Found him, your majesty. Hey, what is he doing here? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the person who might be the next in line to take the throne, Caligula. The next person in line to take the throne, what? So I poisoned your son for absolutely nothing. Take him away boys. It turned out that Sejanus was the mastermind behind the death of Drusus, the son of Tiberius. By the time he was executed, in the capital, riots ensued and the Praetorian Guard, unable to keep the peace, took to looting. Rome has descended into chaos as person after person were put under the infamous Tiberius treason trials. He needed someone new to restore the peace and keep the empire running. That man was Macro, the new head of the Praetorian Guard. Remember him, as he will play an important role later on. I have not yet become your friend. Retorting to a prisoner. Emperor Tiberius. Caligula grew up almost his entire life believing that Tiberius orchestrated the murder of his beloved father, and it was the emperor that issued the order to have his mother and his two elder brothers arrested and essentially killed. Now he had to live under the same roof with the person who had ruined his life, knowing full well that any single mistake or at any time Tiberius could end his life. When he arrived in Capri he became no more than a well-kept hostage under the supervision of the emperor. You can only imagine the fear and hatred that Caligula must have felt at the time. However, he had something going for himself, it is stated by many historians of the period that Caligula was an excellent actor. There's little doubt that Caligula must have hated Tiberius for the demise of his family, but he managed to ingratiate himself to Tiberius by not showing any emotion whatsoever, which was something that Tiberius was also known for. Hey man, just wanted to tell you that your mother and your two brothers are actually dead. Are you okay man? I just told you that your family is dead, aren't you going to say or do anything? Okay, I will just go and do Praetorian Guard stuff. See you. When Caligula arrived in Capri in 31 AD, Tiberius's 12-year-old grandson, Gemellus, also lived at the villa. While Gemellus could have potentially continued the family reign, Tiberius knew that by handing the throne to a child, he would be putting the entire empire in danger. However, six years later, in 37 AD, when Tiberius's health began to deteriorate, Gemellus was now 18 years old, representing a direct threat to Caligula's forthcoming rule. This piece of paper right here is my final will. It is so powerful that not even the gods themselves can nullify it. I have decided that the two of you, Caligula and Gemellus, should rule together as brothers. Take it, Macro, bring it to the Senate, and let my final intentions come true. Should we render it void and null and make Caligula the only ruler? All in favor. So be it then. After Tiberius passed away at the age of 77, which historians can't really agree on how it happened, some say of natural causes, others say Caligula did it and others say that Macro did it on behalf of Caligula, one last person was in his way, Gemellus. So what did Caligula do? So you are gonna end me? No, I'm actually gonna adopt you as my son. What? How does that even work, I'm 18 and you are 24? Don't worry, it's actually normal for the time. Well, let's hope he made the right choice and nothing bad will happen following this decision. Shut up voice from the sky, I'm the emperor now and you can't tell me what to do anymore. After six years spent on the island of Capri, in 37 AD, the man who left Rome as a prisoner, returns, as its emperor to the Tiber with Tiberius, the people of Rome. For over a decade, the people of Rome had been without an emperor. And what was their reaction when they found out that the son of the great general Germanicus was now an emperor? Well, they absolutely loved him. And what did Caligula do in response? Well, this might surprise you, but he actually did really well. He ended the treason trials of Tiberius, recalled all of those who had been exiled, repaired Rome's infrastructure, reinstated the epic gladiator games and many more. He also rebuilt the family that Tiberius tore apart. Caligula appointed his uncle, Claudius, as his Roman consul and reunited with his three sisters, Drusilla, Livilla, and Agrippina. For six months, Rome and its citizens experienced a golden age. Unfortunately, tragedy struck when Caligula fell ill. 
Historians' opinions regarding the nature of this illness are divided, but, let's play a game here. What's the most Roman thing you can think of? Gladiator games. Stealing inventions. The uncontrollable desire to expand to all known continents. Well, it's actually poisoning your enemies. In true Roman fashion, some historians speculate that Caligula was poisoned, while others believe that he suffered from epilepsy or brain fever. Additionally, it was rumored that he consulted with the full moon, and the illness was associated with the lunar cycle in the ancient medical community. Yeah, I'm not making that up. Regardless of the cause, Caligula returned as a totally different man. Had Caligula's rule only lasted six months, he might have been recognized as a formidable leader just like his father, known as the greatest emperor that Rome never had. Unfortunately, Caligula's rule lasted another three years. Hey guys, if you are wondering why I haven't posted the whole story yet, it's because I'm still trying to figure this YouTube thing out as this is a new channel. Anyway, the second part should come out soon as the script and most of the drawings are already done. Thank you for watching.